Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. And we are here to talk about life as stay at home dad. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight, got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet, cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad, that's what I do. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Woo! Hope you all are thawing out after uh, the past uh, frigid weather stream that came through mm-hmm. and froze us all into ice cubes for about a week. <laughs> Maybe longer. We're, we're in double digits, baby. Yeah, we oh, are yeah. too. We're we're uh, we're above forty right now. Woo-hoo. Nice, nice. <laughs> we're not above freezing, but we're close. We oh, might gosh. get above freezing tomorrow. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't envy you. <laughs> I, I love it. I I honestly love it. I really really love it. I I we were we went um, we went over to it's a place called the Boston School Forest, and it's basically a, a state park that they do a lot of things interactions with the schools. Yeah. So that you go there to learn about you know woodcrafting and you know just all sorts of stuff. But one of the things they do is they have uh, we had our kids out of school the last two days, and so they opened up and they got a their lodges set up so you can go skiing, you can go sledding, you can uh, make crafts, you can they have a campfire going, you can make Love s'mores. That. They have the the lodge set up. The FFA came out and they provided a meal. Well, they provided free water and hot chocolate. Okay. Okay. But then they provided a meal for five bucks. Now, I mean, you get what you pay for sometimes, but it was still great for the kids because it was a hot dog and uh, chips, a Capri Sun, and a Rice Krispies treat and a banana. That's a right. definite kids lunch right there. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and I looked at him like, yeah, yeah, I've got $15 for the three of you. Cause one of my kids didn't want to go, but I don't have $20. I'm afraid I cannot, uh, no, I'm not going to eat that. All of that which <laughs> just doesn't just, sound good at I know, all. It, wouldn't make, it wouldn't make, it does not make an adult body feel good to even no, think about, but no. for a kid, like they're I'm like, like chishing. <laughs> and they sat down and they were thirsty. We went in there originally to get water, sat down and immediately popped those Capri Suns and just started shooting them. I mean, oh yeah. Was, and I'm like, no, 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 because I'm not having anybody like a bunch of like a bunch of uh, fraternity and sorority people at the bar, right? man, Just like sh- belly up shots for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> well, we went skiing. We went cross country skiing um, and none of us have been skiing before. So that was a really cool thing. I didn't get to go um, because one of my kids needs a lot of help with physical stuff um i'm not talking like uh i don't mean like disabilities i don't mean like that but he just isn't coordination a physical person yeah he's he, yeah he has still has difficulty really tying his shoes well sure and he's whoa 11 right so he's getting there it just takes time he's always had manual dexterity he's been a little bit slower for him yeah. but the lady's like you sure you don't want to ski too and i'm thinking i've never been skiing this kid's gonna fall over and i'm just gonna fall on top of him and that's going to be it. And we're going to leave. And that's just because I will never go back to Boston <laughs> School for it. Are you the guy that fell down on his kid and almost killed him? No, I'm not. Oh, God. We're leaving. <laughs> that was a right? different dad. It's a different dad. Absolutely. It was this By golly, we're dad. trying. Dang it. We're, we'll figure this out. I got but, some snowshoes. I'll walk beside them. They can right, figure it out. Right. And that's what I did. That's what I, I did. I just, they didn't have snowshoes there, but yeah. But they actually also had, I forgot to mention that, they had snowshoe hiking. You could go and just cool. borrow a pair of snowshoes shoes and and they're the new like i don't i assume they're aluminum but the new light frame you know modern types and all that um and yeah it was it was amazing it's so much stuff going on and it was practically all free i mean again the ffa was doing its fundraising there for the meal but that's five bucks is nothing really yeah i love the fact that a state park has that those kind of programs for Mm -hmm. you know people in the area because that's those are the things that keep a park like that open and going is yeah. having having good programs that don't cost a lot of money because you know you get all the entertainment and education without like breaking your bank at the same time to do mm-hmm. it so that's right. awesome that sounds like a lot of fun i think i saw some of the pictures that you posted uh for the cross-country skiing and uh, i was like mm-hmm. oh they finally got to go because i remember uh that you were talking a couple episodes back that uh you guys were supposed to do that, but I yeah. think it was because school got canceled. You didn't get to go 
on that little trip. So I'm glad you got to go now. Yeah, too much weather. My fourth grader who was supposed to go that day, this is all she wanted. I mean, she just, she would have done it. This is all I wanted. You know, you could just tell she just missed it. They do get a makeup day, which I wasn't aware of, but um, so I said, yeah, we're absolutely, we're the first thing we're going to do is go skiing and then we'll see. And I mean, I'm getting the kids ready and I'm working with Marcus because he's taking the longest. Cause again, he's just, you know, it's just, he just okay. kind of clumsy, let's say. And, um, um, Fabian goes out and he's first and he's kind of slow, but he's figuring out cause he's, you know, he's 17. He can figure this out. I mean, it takes a little bit to figure a out how bit, to move yeah, all but, that. <laughs> right. And he's good. He's good. He's not going fast. Lizzie leaves maybe three to five minutes after and catches him within the first hundred yards there's always I mean, one she's like, shush, shush, shush. <laughs> right that's what i was thinking i'm like of course it's my daredevil my fearless child um and she comes back now they disappear and i'm going with marcus he falls down and we take like five minutes to get him back up and then we're going forward and there's a line of people behind us because he's going so slow and i'm like let's go off on the side here and he gets off to the side and they're starting to go by he's like i just want to go back i'm like Cool, 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 cool. All right. So we got to baby step the skis, you know, 180 uh-huh. degrees and then cross over and get back. We get over and we come back and I'm getting his um, skis off, you know, and uh, Lizzie shows up. I mean, she's coming down the trail because they left us because I mean, how they couldn't wait. They were gone out of sight on one yeah. of the longest trails and she's coming back and Fabian is not. <laughs> right and i'm like like i left him back there. uh exactly she did she goes i told him to keep up <laughs> and she just comes in she goes i want to go again i'm like uh, uh, uh no i can't i gotta i have to see you with a, an adult you can't leave Fabian. i want to go lap my brother i'll be right back. right yeah because that's <laughs> what i was still, thinking you want to make lap it feel even worse <laughs> right and fabian comes back and he's pissed He's like, I, I told her to stop Se- I'm, several times. I told her, don't pass me. Don't go. And she just took off and she wouldn't wait, dad. And I'm like, you're not in trouble. Okay. I know how this child is. And you're right. She does not listen when you tell her to stop or slow down. Um, and it was not your fault at all, but he was so mad because she wouldn't listen and he doesn't want to have kids. Right. But I looked at him and I said, if you ever somehow adopted a child or something and had a child in your life, this is what they do. Okay. Yep. This is what you have to, this is why people have children when they're young, because when you get older, you cannot catch them. They don't, just don't hold my, don't hold my fun drum back. Cause uh, it ain't going to work. All right? Right. Like that, that thing right. beats to its own rhythm. <laughs> That's what Bingo. that is. Oh but, my uh, yeah. goodness. It was That's great. hilarious. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds that sounds a lot like uh Ruby. Ruby's like that. Yeah. She would just cool. take off and go do something and uh Yeah. But he, but Hezekiah is like that, but he just totally like forgets that he's with people. <laughs> so like we've been yeah. out on a uh on a, on a bike trail before and uh I was running and I was like, "Oh, I can run and they can bike and it'll be no big deal." Well, Hezekiah took that as a personal challenge to see just how far he could go <laughs> and also forget that he has working ears. And uh, so yeah. the first time that we did it, um, like he was gone. Like I didn't even see him. And I'm like, holy crap. Like there are people on this trail. Like I, you know, like yeah, Ruby, Ruby's with, um, with Corey and they're back there and she's like, I can't get i can't catch him like there's no way like i mean he just Mm-mm. took off like lightning and i'm yeah. like well i'll run up there and keep see what i'm doing and i had to ask somebody that was a biker that was coming towards me i'm like hey did you see a little boy by himself just in his <laughs> glory like taking off and right and uh and then i had and that biker was like yeah i saw him he's up there a ways and i'm like oh, great so then i had another <laughs> So then I had another bicyclist who was coming behind me and I was like, Hey, if you see a little boy by himself, just having his own little like party type of deal, like on the you know trail, just enjoying life. I was like, can you tell him that dad said he needs to turn around and come back? And the biker was like on it and like <laughs> ended up catching him. And uh, he was up there. Like I'd say probably at least a quarter of a mile. From me. Yeah. He really got away. Um, so the Man. next time we went out, I hooked a freaking walkie talkie to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause I was like, excellent. I don't Excellent. like, 
you know, we didn't have the uh, smartwatches at that time, but I was like, mm -hmm. I, I have a five mile walkie talkie and by God, I'm going to use that thing. Right. Like, strapped thing it to, to him. I'm like, if you hear me like say, come back or stop, I was like, I, you better freaking do it. <laughs> I seriously, I have, I've looked at the idea of, and I would never do this, of course, but the idea of having a dog shock collar around their wrist you only got so and much. Just, you only got so just, much radius on those, and that's it. That's it. My my uh, my brother in law's like, yeah, I got one for the dog, but no, the kids will get too far away. There's no way it would work. And I'm like, have you tried it? What are you talking? He goes, no, just logistically, it doesn't. It wouldn't work. You know, I I never would have do that to my kid. And I'm like, mm, did you put that shot collar on your kid once? Because <laughs> just for like you said, their ears stop working. Oh, it's like they're just gone, and they do not care what they hear, what they're going, they're going there. And for me too, I'm always because I have anxiety. I'm always worried my kids are going to get abducted or eaten by a mountain lion or fall in the lake or you know hit by a moose i mean just ridiculous stuff there's yeah. no way these things are going to happen right but i'm still just in a panic yeah and they take off and i have to actually do my breathing exercises and uh and it's really funny because every time i i get around them and like one kid takes off and i'm like don't you know come back i yell to them i know they heard me they keep going it's usually lizzie and i'll be hyperventilating <laughs> right. And my, my oldest, he'll be like, I didn't know you were that fat. I'm like, I, I'm not, I mean, I am, oh, but I'm not, this is just, I'm, I have to control my breathing because my anxiety is, is choking me because this kid has, yeah. like you said, disappeared mm -hmm. and there'll be a quarter mile and I won't let them go on their bikes unless I'm on a bike. I would not try to keep up with a bike. I, I just, they just, they have too much momentum. They have too much yeah. you know, downhill. They're going to leave you. And I've told them before, like, well, we could just go. Um, nope. Nope. We're either all walking or all biking. I cannot deal with this in between thing because yep. they would, they would lap you. They would oh, come yeah. around the, the thing and they would come back and like, Hey dad. I'm like, I, mm, I do not like that. You're behind me now. <laughs> Jeez. Need you to slow down. Yeah, they get it's like one of those things, you know, how like uh, people get angry and they always people talk about like blood fills up in your ears, like you just kind of mm -hmm. that's all your thing. It's like fun fills up in their ears, <laughs> and that's <laughs> yeah. all they they're like, it's all they know. time of my life. <laughs> and honestly, I love that, you know, because that's what you want. You want them experiencing life at a hundred percent and the joy and the yeah. excitement but they don't think about the danger. They don't think about the risk. And that's why they have parents, I guess, to, to go like, no, 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 do not jump off that. Do not jump off that. No, a trash bag is not going to slow you down. It is not yeah. a parachute. You well, will hit the ground and break an ankle. I mean, this is sort of a sore subject here in Cincinnati, but I think it falls right in line with it because actually they just, there was a documentary that just came out on it. Uh, the whole incident with Arambe, the gorilla at the zoo yeah. from a few years ago. Uh-huh. That kid was like three years old and all he wanted to do was play with that gorilla. And I'm pretty sure he was all like, I'm on it, like and got over the fence. And then eventually when got down there was like, oh, crap, what did I just do? Because, they... <laughs> yeah, this is so, a very large creature. And, uh, you know, it, it, those are the kind of like that was the thing. Like, yes, there's a part you're like, what are the parents doing? But at the same time, you're like that kid, yeah. like he saw what he wanted to do and he was going for it. And it didn't yeah. matter who was yelling at him. Like exactly. Stop. Like he was, he was on a mission mm -hmm. and, uh, and that and was, you get that. I think if you're an involved parent, Oh you yeah. Get that. Like you see a kid screaming down the bike trail on a bike and no, uh, no adults around him, you know, mm -hmm. okay, this isn't a bad parent. This is a parent that has screamed and yelled and instructed and loved and encouraged yeah. and everything they could. And the kid just like, nah i'm gonna go that way well and they and and those parents had other kids there with them too i think there were three kids total and mm -hmm. so from what i've heard from the story was that they were taking care they were dealing with something with those two kids and the other one was like well you got it i'm out right <laughs> like, right like i got my own personal business to take care exactly. of exactly you guys handle that family stuff i'm gonna go visit the gorilla yeah exactly it's crazy and that's the thought that's where they're at and it is that one second it's yeah. like you look away and you turn around and they're hugging a gorilla. What? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Right? You know, Ex it's, exactly. It's, when you see them put something in their mouth, especially when they're th two, three, they put, I mean, it doesn't exist if they haven't had their mouth on it. Right. I mean, it's just, right. they have to touch everything with their tongue and it's disgusting. And that's yep. why we always get sick when we have kids and they'll, you'll turn around and you'll look back and it's like, what, 
what is in your mouth? What is in your mouth right now? <laughs> and of course they take off. They're not, they're not going to give it back to you. No. Like, oh, no, I got this. I'm out like a dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's so different too. Like, you know, you have that incident with kids and then you have adults who are mindfully climbing into, you know, zoo enclosures back, you know, if, if, I, I've heard one recently, but there was one a few years ago around that same time where I think somebody over like in Singapore or something decided to like climb into like a tiger exhibit or something. And you're like, yeah and dies and everybody's like uh yeah it kind of knew that was coming uh uh-huh. <laughs> i don't like one you can you can say okay hey they're a kid like that's it. for an adult you're like they they made a choice like mm-hmm. they, they made a very conscious Bingo. choice to go in there it's much different <laughs> exactly exactly they're, they're, they don't have a parent right at the moment at, <laughs> when they're like 30 years old telling them you probably shouldn't do this mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah that's i tell you that that's what keeps you on your toes as a parent. You know, you just don't know what mm-hmm. sometimes they're going to do. And I think sometimes people need to not have knee jerk reactions to uh, yeah. kids doing stuff like that, because that's one of those, like those are kids being kids. Like mm-hmm. the parents aren't bad or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. just <laughs> that, and, that kid had a mission. People that say, I would never let my kid do that. Whatever oh, it is, whatever they're talking about. I always think, Do you think they let their kid do that first? You don't realize that kids just have their own free will and do whatever the heck they want and don't care what you say. You know, they just don't care. There's nothing you can do, nothing you can say. They're going to go do that thing. No, they don't have that cognitive reasoning going on in their head to understand like, oh, like they're telling me this because of X, Y, Z thing. All they're like is you're keeping me from doing this thing. And I don't understand why you're not letting me do it. To me, it looks like fun. I don't see the other side. Like you call it danger. I call it fun. Mm -hmm. We're not connecting. Like there's a disconnect here, mom and dad. (laughs) You have no ability to protect yourself. You don't know what right or wrong is much less danger. Just like, Oh yeah. Well, like kids that touch hot things. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like, it's one of those things, like, especially if you, you start cooking with your kids and they get a little bit older, of course. And like I had, um, Lizzie when she was seven, I think got her a little steps tool so she could get up beside me and help me, um, make cookies or whatever we're doing something simple that she could. And then she said, I want to help you cook dinner. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, that, that would be great. I think you, you need to learn how to cook. You need to learn how to cook dinner and yeah, let's go. And I told her, I said, this pan is very hot. This is the, the Turner spatula spoon, whatever we had. And this is the handle. And this is the only place you can touch this pan. Yeah. You can touch it anywhere else. It's bad. All right. And she's moving around. Of course, it's difficult for her because her manual dexterity and all that. And she's moving it around and she reaches over and literally grabs the pot and yanks her hand off immediately, of course, you know, and I'm like, yeah, she's like, she looks at it and it's no, it's just like maybe like a first degree burn. It's not, she took it off really fast. It only took some water. It wasn't a big deal, but she right. took it off fast enough and she's looking at it and it's reddened a little bit. And she said, you told me not to do that. You know, like, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, I did. And I need you to tell the police or defects or whoever shows up at the house <laughs> and asks how you got this burn. You need to say, dad told me not to, but I uh-huh. accidentally did it. Right. Exactly. Well, it's just exactly. hilarious. They have no, well, you know, they're learning, they're learning everything. So yeah, no, not definitely. a bad thing. Yeah. I, that one is always interesting to me. Like, well, the other thing too, like, you know, how the whole phrase, like it takes a village, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I feel like, you know, a lot of times when I'm out in public with my kids or whatever, um, you know, and I kind of see they're got their thing going on, but I'm like always head on a swivel. Like what other things are going on? Cause I mean, I've seen where like, you know, you got neighbor Sally up on, uh, up on the playground and all of a sudden, like, she's on the edge looking and you're like, oh, don't do it. And you like take a couple steps closer and you're like, she's thinking about it. Don't do it. And you take a couple more steps closer. And next thing you know, you're like, you got Sally in your arms and mom's like, what? You know, it's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I don't fault you, mom. Uh, but no. your kid's a daredevil. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that kind of thing. I mean, and it's one of those deals where too, it's like, you don't go out of your way. You're like, oh, like I'm looking for this as far as like, you know, if I catch this kid, I'm going to like, you know, discipline them or something along the lines. It's like, it's like, I'm just trying to keep them from harming themselves or hurting <laughs> yep. somebody else. And it's like, just enough to be like, Hey, where's your mom and dad? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like 
here and then going from there i think that that's you 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 have parents that are like that that can play i guess what you would call like a zone defense and then you have the ones who are just hyper focused on their own kids and that's no fault of them maybe they maybe right. they need that hyper focus type of deal cuz yeah. especially if you know you're a parent of just one you don't even know what zone defense even is as a parent a lot of times. Yeah. But uh, I think that, you know, you I just see that so often. Like I'll be out at like a baseball game or something like that. And you, you know, one kid bolts off from their parents and like a crowd or whatever. And I'm like, I just happen to be in the area. I'm like, Hey, and like, stop. And like, you just see like the parents like immediately and just shock and horror, like looking around, like where did little Timmy go? And it's like, I got him. Like he's right yep, here. He's right here. <laughs> you know, the, and then the parents are like, Oh my gosh. I'm always like, it takes a village. It's all good. Like we're mm-hmm. all, all parents We're in this together. <laughs> if, right. you're, yes. if you're somebody who's really attuned to the fact that you're like, I get it. These kids are like little cats who just, oh, look, there's a laser pointer. <laughs> and they're everywhere. Right, right. And they're gone. <laughs> and they're, they're gone. gone, exactly. I saw something shiny. I'm taking mm-hmm. off after it. Exactly. I remember the first time, and I only had two kids at the time, and I told, uh, we had friends at the playground, and I told my, our, my friend's kid, I'm like, oh, you didn't, you went on the monkey bars. That's great. And, you know, he, he scaled across them and what have you. And I'm like, that's amazing. And Fabian's like, dad, I can go across the monkey bars too. I'm like, great, kid, let me see you. And I'm holding the baby, right? Because James was so little, he, you know, was like a toddler at most. So, and Fabian runs up, goes up the ladder, climbs up on the top of the monkey bars, and runs across them. <laughs> and I remember this moment specifically because of my brain not processing what this child is actually doing. I mean, there's just no place in my brain where anybody with any sense. <laughs> or a sense of self-preservation would run across the top of the bars. <laughs> now he, he did it. He did it without even, you know, slowing down. He just, bup, 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 and then he crawled down and he goes, ta-da. And I'm like, I, we have to go home now. We yeah. have to go home now because one, I need to have a heart attack. And uh, two, I held my baby so tight. I, I think I made him vomit. And three, <laughs> all the parents here, think I'm a moron. Everybody <laughs> here is looking at me going, why would you let your kid do that? You know, cause that's the natural reaction for so many people. And I'm thinking Tra- translation. Never, yeah. Yeah. Translate translation of what kids say and do versus what parents think they're saying and what they're <laughs> about to do is probably one of the biggest disconnects. Cause yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, I can go across the monkey bars. You're like, oh yeah, you're gonna use your arms. No, I'm going all the way to the top. I'm right. going, I'm going bridge across. Like we're <laughs> like screw this hanging part. Like I've got a different way that doesn't allow me to just not make it because I can't hang on because I'm not tight enough. I'm going mm-hmm. to the top. Yep. Yeah, I well, like I said, like you know that disconnect there. You get kids who say things that don't match up to you know like wording and stuff like that. Um, I was listening to a TikTok where uh, the kid was like, yeah, yesterday was was so great. We went to uh, what do you say the name of the place was? It was uh, something lake or something like that. And he's like, we didn't go to a lake. It's the middle of winter. What are you talking about? And uh, he keeps going on talking about this. And uh, the, the dad goes, I had to call in my kid's interpreter, which is my like second, my first, my oldest to talk to them to figure out what it was. <laughs> like he's standing there and they're having a conversation. And then uh, he, like the oldest, like turns to him and is just like, yeah, he's talking about when we went to Chipotle yesterday. <laughs> Chipotle. Well, Chipotle Lake. Yeah. Chipotle Lake, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Something like that. It was hilarious though. And I'm like, that is so true. When mm-hmm. you, it's like, what are they saying? Because Hezekiah and Ruby were like that when they were little. Like, I was mm-hmm. like, what does Ruby say? I cannot understand what she's saying. And Hezekiah is like, oh, I can, I can interpret that. And I'm like, great. <laughs> Tell nice. me what she's talking about. I'm glad one of us can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, huh. sometimes you just got to lean in on the kids a little bit and be like, T- sh- show me, show me what you're doing here. What's going on? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, so that, you know. It's it's always something that's what keeps us on our toes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, why you should have kids young? You just need to be faster. You need to have more <laughs> stamina than these guys. 
<laughs> I'll tell you in this day and age, man, I mean, I feel like it's like a you could be come a parent at very old ages. Like it's like, you know, the, there's a very broad stroke on uh on the age yeah. gap, which is which is great. Like, hey, if it if it works for you, that's it's if all good. we had not had if I had not had a vasectomy, we would have another baby. Yeah. And it would be the stupidest, most ignorant decision I'd ever made in my life because <laughs> Just just over the the holiday, spending time with my my two little nephews and they're you know two and three or something like that, I was done, and it cured me. I'm like, no, I don't want a baby anymore. No, I'll yeah. hold a baby. I'll take care of it. But I do not want a baby. And yeah, and, get your baby and fixed and give it back. Marnie's been this way for like uh, how old it, ten years, nine, ten years or so. She's like, no, we're not having another one. Nah, nah, no, it's not gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, four is enough. <laughs> oh, so uh, we were watching bluey the other day and uh there's this episode that i thought hit really close to home for for parents especially dads uh because you got uh bandits driving the car and the kids are in the back and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff and he just makes the comment of like oh i feel so old and uh <laughs> and the, the the kids are like we're sorry dad and he's like yeah but you also make me feel young and they're like how can you feel old and young at the same time? <laughs> and uh, he's just I like, understand. and he just goes, you just do like, he didn't really go into an explanation on it. And the kids are like, okay. And it's like, yeah, I mean, there are times where your body feels old, but then like you feel young because you get to do a lot of the fun things with the kids as well. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's both sides or you get to experience something as a parent that you didn't get to experience as a kid, you know, like yes. there's a lot of that too. Yes, so. which is, I mean, experiencing things through the eyes of your child. Yeah. Is, take a kid to one of those, either a water a pad or a fountain, like if they have it at you know, the park or the town square where they have a fountain that pops up, and hearing them laugh while they're, mm -hmm. that fountain is, you know, shooting water every once in a while, and they get wet and they're not wet, and it, it is the most delightful thing that I've experienced probably in my life. Yeah. I mean, just their sheer joy. And that to me is one of the main reasons why I love kids so much because yeah. they do have that it, the same way as they have no fear of things. They're not worried about enjoying themselves too much or being seen as having too much fun or, you know, yeah. just being exuberant. And a lot of times as adults, we kind of pull ourselves back a little bit. We, we don't want to admit that something just delights us. Now I don't have a problem with it. Um, but I am the fountain. I am just bubbling over with the joy when I am in there. Right. Um, but seeing that and watching them do it and allowing yourself to feel that with them yeah. is one of the greatest parts of being a parent, I think. Yeah. I, I think too, when, when you're able to, you know, basically that like, all right, like I didn't have these experiences as a kid for whatever reason. And there are multiple reasons for it, but we're going to make this something special and go and do it. And then, you know, you're like all this uh, 2020 vision insight into like, oh, like this was more than I, this was better than I expected it was going to be, you know, like you know, that kind of thing. Like that's, I think one of the reasons why you see so many families now, you know, striving to go on road trips or, you know, trying to do other special things in their, in their family's lives and stuff like that. And just mm -hmm. the pure, the pure joy of it. And I think back in the day, like, a lot of families, it would have been like, oh, this is, this has got to be really hard. And now you got, you know, where it's like, parents are like, no, it's, we can do this. Like we can make this, we can make this work and it'll be fun. I, I think that that's one of the cool things I like to see come up in conversation in like the Facebook group or even in discord too, is you've got mm -hmm. dads who are like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this road trip or has anybody ever been to this place and what was your experience like? Because this is, I, I really want to take my family there, and it's probably one of the coolest, uh, like, I guess, technological things is the fact that you don't have to do as much like research. Like, you can just, you know, knock yeah. on the door to the the hive and be like, "Hey, <laughs> who? Raise your hand. Who in here's done this?" And then have a conversation and get all kinds of great inside information yes. that allows you to 
enjoy things like what do i don't what shouldn't i miss what should i miss like <laughs> on this trip kind of thing right like i heard about this is it worth it no do not go down there they do not actually have a ball of twine it's a joke they just you know <laughs> just want your money or whatever and those things that you will fall for if someone oh, yeah. doesn't tell you you know, mm -hmm. it's almost like having a local friend like, oh, you live there. Yeah. Let me let me just pick your brain a little bit. Yeah. And it's that way, I think, about everything. And, you know, I'm I'm thinking about getting my uh, my kids a, a smartwatch. You know, I'm thinking about getting my kids a, a, a Garmin watch so that I can track him or whatever. What's that like? And you have yeah. people that literally have one and like, oh, yeah, don't do this because the invisible fence thing doesn't actually work it doesn't alert you it lets it just lets them go out but it doesn't send you an alert it just shows red on the screen you have to be looking at it yeah and you know those little tips and tricks and i love because in the past you look at mom communities and there were a lot of mom wars there was a lot of infighting and mm -hmm. this is the best and only way to train your child or teach your child or adjust your child's whatever but with dads, a lot of times it's, you know, I did it this way and this is what it worked for my kid. Yeah. And it's just a suggestion. It's a tip. And someone else looks at it and goes, well, that's great. But my kid has, uh, I don't know, my kid likes to wear hats, so it's not going to work, whatever. But you are able to work with whoever you're talking to and they're really open and giving. You know, they want to help you have a great experience. It's almost like I said about having a local tour guide or something. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad you brought it up. Well, and too, like, you know, talking about technology and, and the whole like smartwatch thing, like mm -hmm. I, you know, I remember back when I was going to dad 2.0 and we were having conversations with Bark Technology and just yeah. all of the different like things that they were doing. And it's been interesting, like, keeping in touch like through instagram like they've been really good about sharing great stuff to parents um about what's going on in the technology world because like they ended up basically branding their own phone for kids so oh, like, really they have a bark yeah bark has its own phone that you can get um and so mm -hmm. it's you know combined with their technology that allows for you know tracking what your kids are involved in and stuff and uh just that's really big or just their technology just to put things like on you know if, if say you've already gotten them a, a phone or they have a tablet or whatever like there's just the app and and what it does as far as like being able to just give your kids the freedom but at the same time like you know kind of staying in the know on what you know what is going on but along with that they are really doing some amazing things in the fashion of even just like Hey, like, for instance, iPhone just had an update. Did you know that this app got added to your phone without you knowing it? And I even, even me, like, I mean, I have had an iPhone forever. And it's like, you know, I just blind, like, all right, you need to update my phone or whatever. Yeah, and they're like, cool. yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, there's this new app. And this one's called Journal. And I had seen like the thing, like when they showed it and I'm like, oh yeah, like I saw that. I didn't, I didn't know where that came from. And then you hear about like, oh, well, it does this, this, and this, but it also allows you for your kids to put things behind a block wall that they are the only ones that have a password to it. And I'm like, well, that's not, no, what, what, right. what is that? Like, and so, you know, just, you don't know until you have somebody that's, you know, done the footwork to be able to see it. And I, I still to this day get people who reach out to me and are like, Hey, you were involved with bark technologies in the day. Like, do you still have like a, a, a referral code or anything for like a deal? And I'm like, I have one. I don't know if it works or not. I've <laughs> yeah. so, um, but yeah, it's like, I, I don't even remember like who I gave it. Was it to you who I gave it to last? I don't know. It wasn't you. It was somebody else. Nope. Uh, somebody I got mine from Orlando. I oh, think it was Orlando. Yeah. It was Orlando that they... Or not Orlando. Had a presentation. Orlando or, or... Anyway, one of the conventions. I think it was Minneapolis, maybe. But or DadCon at home? You know, That's what it was. It was DadCon at home. That was what it was. It was DadCon at okay. home. Um, but yeah, so like they had a, a code or whatever for being able to get like a discount on the membership and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, those, those are things where they're worth checking out, especially, 
you know, if you're looking at those things, because it kind of gives you a little peace of mind when you decide to kind of level up as a parent, mm-hmm. like, all right, like we're going to bring technology into our kids' lives, but how do I do this to where I don't like have an aneurysm from all of the anxiety? Right. <laughs> right. And the, the reality of how easy it is for your kid to hide stuff from you yeah, on a phone and not just the thing that you mentioned with that app, but just in general. I mean, yeah. my, yeah. my 17 year old has that I know of five email accounts. Dang. And why some of them are very legit. Uh, he has the account that I made for like, for all the kids having that account and that's fine. He made his own account with his, his new name. Um, uh, and that's fine. Okay. And then he's got three other ones that are possibly fine. And of course, there's always the potential that they're absolutely not fine. And we've gone over them. I've talked to him about them and we've gone through it, but he had them before I ever knew he did. Oh, wow. Because you just get it. You just, I want a new email address and you just go get one. He, Gmail will give you as many email addresses as you want. Probably. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? So, and I'm like, I can't, you know, stop you from doing this, but I want you to understand, you know, this is something that I don't want you to hide from me. Because yeah. if I discover you're hiding things from me, then one, we're going to investigate the whole thing together, sitting right beside each other on the couch, and it'll be embarrassing as it could possibly be. And then second, I will take away all your access. Mm-hmm. You know, don't there? There's no. It's it's for me. It's binary. It's you're yeah. doing well and you're safe with it, or you're not doing it when it comes to the cell phone and yeah, you know, the, well, being and that's, online. And that's the thing with the Bark technology side of it is you can actually put all that stuff into their thing and it'll actually track it for you know specific wording or dangerous phrases that kind of thing to be able to you know say hey like saw this pop up just wanted to check in with you and see what's going on kind of thing and and have a conversation versus like give me your phone and let me like you know go all cia on it like this is right a a much gentler approach to it so Mm -hmm. i for me like This is kind of touched really close to home, not with my kids in general, but um, I got a phone call yesterday uh, telling me from my my mom called me and said that, hey, um, have you seen on Facebook anything about one of your high school friends? And I was like, no, what happened? And uh, one of their uh, one like so this high school friend, um, his oldest um harmed himself um and ended his life and he was 16 and it was just really hard to hear because it's like you know for me i immediately i was sad and then i felt really angry from the standpoint i'm like the amount of times that we've all been talking about mental health and how we're trying to make that a easy conversation and all the time that people have taken to try to, you know, basically say like, it's okay to like talk about these difficult things. And still like you have, you know, even kids that are just not feeling comfortable to be able to have those conversations or whatever it is. And of course, I don't know the whole story behind it or whatever, but it's just like, man, like you just feel for these parents and these these kids who basically kind of are become like victims to like society's like negative talk and things going on and things like that i'm just like Mm -hmm. i for me like i've just like as a parent who doesn't have a kid that's that old but is getting into like kind of into that age bracket i'm just like how do i even you know how can i have those conversations or you know, like what is it? And it's so like, you know, fostering that relationship, you know, and and trying to continue that. But at the same time, you know, it's like, you can't just like drag it out of them. Like what's going on. They need to feel that it's safe. And I don't know, like for me, like I remember yesterday, just kind of sitting in this, like, how am I going to, how am I going to navigate the next few years? And what does that look like to, have those conversations and like the one thing i was like well like we've kind of already started talking to them about like you are 100 percent able to come talk to us about anything and Mm -hmm. 
no, you know, to worry about, you know, retribution or anything like that. Like we just, if you're dealing with something hard, we want to be able for you to say what it is. And I think that too, like even saying like, you know, maybe there's like a code word or something. And that code word means like, I'm going to tell you something. And like, we're in, we're in Switzerland, like, <laughs> you know, like, yes. And maybe that's the word Switzerland. I don't know. But it just that whole idea of like, I'm going to tell you something might be a confession, whatever it is. But it means also too, that when I tell you this, like, I'm not getting in trouble for it because it needs to be said kind of deal and we can talk yeah. it out. And I mean, yeah. there's, you know, there's different parameters to that, but I think that that is something I'd like to see something like that actually be a topic of conversation, maybe at a home, at home dad con for a breakout session of just like for maybe some of the guys who have been through that, like, what, what did you, how did you, how did you base it? How did you formulate it? How did you, you know, proceed to activate that within your family and what's been the outcome from it. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I, I think that's kind of where I'm at. Like, you know, my oldest is going to turn 11 here in a couple of weeks. And it's like, I got two more years before he comes a teenager, but I'm not going to wait until he actually crosses that line for me to then all, all of a sudden start being like, Oh, I got to do these things. Like, no, like I want to be proactive and get ahead of it <laughs> before it actually starts really, you know, taking hold. And at 11, I mean, I feel like kids are like, I don't want to say, I, I don't know, like what he is at 11 or what kids are at 11 is like kind of what kids are, were back when we were younger at like 15 in some ways with some of the things you're just like, and you're just like, holy crap. Like, you know, it's like, cause even my eight year old, um, <clears throat> Corey and I've had this conversation multiple times. It's like, you know, eight year old girls <clears throat> around that time period like they could end up, you know, having their period, like and starting their menstrual cycles at, at eight. And wow, that yeah. is mind blowing uh, to me because, um, you know, it's like I think about the fact that, you know, I mean, there was a 10 year old girl here in uh, in Ohio a couple years ago who uh, was raped by like her family or whatever and was and was pregnant. And it was mm. like, geez, 10. Like, mm. it's just so just things like that. Like, it's just I feel like as a proactive parent and that it's just important to kind of be thinking ahead of the game. You don't have to get like overly like crazed by it, but just, all right, what are, what are, what things are we putting in parameter? And so, I mean, you got kids of all, <laughs> all ages from <laughs> that. So I'm sure you're dealt with some of it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a very, very, well, you know, we make it, I think more sensitive than it needs to be. Um, we worked pretty hard with the family, but the reality of it is when it comes to menstruation, I only know what I've read, right? right? I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't. I don't know the day to day. I don't understand it, you know, as well as any woman that's gone through it yeah, um, or any man for that matter. So looking at what, um, like to teach my daughter and I look at it, I'm like, I, you know, you're, you're too young. You're not going to worry about it for another couple of years. No, Marnie smartly, wisely said, no, I'm already talking to her about it. Mm -hmm. And just so she knows what happens and that it's natural and normal and nothing crazy happens. Um, it's going to be an emotional time. Probably it's going to be an, an unsettling time yeah. um, because it's such a huge change. But I've prepped her and Marnie's fortunately taken care of that. Um, and she's obviously way better at that than I could be. <laughs> and just being prepared. Yeah. Um, and talking about things that, you know, before I had kids, I never talked about poop. I never talked about pooping. I never admitted that I did it. I wouldn't do it in public. I've been anal retentive my whole life and I would find a secret spot. I was a shy pooper, you know, I wouldn't even say the word really. I wouldn't. And now it's just like poop, 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 poop. What? Nobody's going to be hurt by that. I'm going to get a sign in my bathroom. I'm looking to get it to get a sign made that as is a P and then a long line, uh, like a piece of wood and another P at the other end and the toilet paper rolls are the O's. <laughs> I love right? it. And it's going to be poop. <laughs> Let's go and just own it. Right. And the, the reason I bring that up is because, and not menstruation is anything like pooping, but menstruation is such a natural, normal, common everyday thing. 
and we make it a lot of people make it into this huge thing that you can't even talk about like men that can't even go buy you know uh, pads or or tampons yeah for their wife and i'm like we, what i carry them in my day pack I, I i have a small little we call it the football it's got tampons and pads in it yeah. and they're they're technically for my family but if if a a woman said, you know, I, I've got to go. I'm like, well, I have some and you know, we call it the football. I think I said that, but well, I'll give you the football and you take it and do what you need to do and bring it back to me, you know? And I don't, yeah. why is it a thing? Uh, it, 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 obviously it is a thing. There's a lot more to it, but the reality is, is yeah, it's a thing. Let's just do it. Let's take care of it. Yeah. I We're think that that's like, don't make, don't make the normal things weird. That's mm -hmm. probably, you know, like that's the, the, the basis behind that. Like mm -hmm. that, you know, because kids ask questions and yeah. you don't want to be like, uh, I don't want to answer that. Like you can right. answer it and you can answer it in a way that it's the information they need to know without going too deep into it, mm -hmm. you know? And if they have more questions, you know, just kind of, you play it by ear only, and you yeah. only need to answer what they ask. Like you don't need to ask them make it more. why they ask that question. Exactly. That's yeah. what I've learned is the mo the wisest thing I think anybody's ever told me is Yeah. That's a great question. What makes you ask that? Right. And a lot of times it's nothing like we were making it. They were, they were just like, well, you know, Timmy at school said, uh, girls lay eggs. Uh, he did. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, they don't. Um, so no, that is not what happens and leave it at that. You know, you don't have to go any further. You know, just satisfy their question and maybe their curiosity is good. And I think for me, away. I probably want to know more like, so how did that conversation come up? Why right. do you, why, why, who was, who was saying that? Wait, wh who said that? <laughs> yeah. Where, cause it, yeah, it's like the, the Chipotle Lake thing, you know, it's like, that, that's what that comes down to. <laughs> like, yep. Hmm. I need to know more. I just, I need to understand how this, I, <laughs> this train of thought. And you know, it could very well be in my that situation. Well, that's what his parents told him. Because yeah. it was just one of those things where you're like, no, no I can't explain menstruation to you. I cannot well, exchange think about birth. I'm just going to back off and say they lay eggs. Think <laughs> of all of the generations whose parents told their kids, if you kiss a boy, if you're a girl, if you kiss a boy, you'll become pregnant. You get pregnant. And just that, how that has been something that went through multiple generations yes just because somebody didn't want to have a actual conversation about yeah. reproduction mm -hmm. i mean that's that's the simplicity of it all really like you know you you make up your own little story and like that takes off like wildfire you know some other parent like oh that's a great way to do it like mm -hmm. no it's not no <laughs> not that is, no. that is detrimental and we have seen how that has been the right. case throughout society so, yeah, I, I mean, we even, we have that with, uh, you know, just all of our conversations with our kids too. I mean, just having the ability to just, okay, let's answer that. And then if they have, you know, something else, keep going on. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, you know, parenting is, uh, is an ever changing day to day thing. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think that, uh, having these kind of conversations, one, it's, it's nice to be able to have that conversation with somebody else who's like willing to do it. But at the same time too, it's nice to be able to even just get around, um, other people and have it, or, Hey, I heard this conversation and take it to your partner spouse and basically say, I was listening to this podcast and they mm -hmm. were talking about this. Like we've never actually discussed this before. And yeah and doing and that it's time it's time yeah. to discuss it <laughs> you need to do it now <laughs> yeah don't don't wait Your exactly. kids yeah. are growing faster than you think yeah, and exactly. i will say to you talk about how difficult this can be and every time we have a conversation i and, and if i think everybody listening knows that you edit the podcast mm -hmm. and one of the things that you do is you make a synopsis and you make a title and every time we have a conversation i think how is brock going <laughs> to figure out a succinct way to cover all of the crap that I rabbit trailed all over. And we were talking about this and this and this, and this. how are these related? Well, it's all parenting pretty much maybe. Yeah. And every time I think, man, 
I'm giving I'm giving Brock more work this week. I'm just gonna have to to but we need to talk about this, right? It has nothing to do with really what we were talking about five minutes ago, but it's fine. It's fine. Hey, you know, uh, this one will be like week. this this one will be like skiing through life and leveling up. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did it right there. I got yeah, it from the beginning go. to the end. You're genius. I saw it. I saw you. I just was there and you plucked it out of the air and like, here it is. This is, this is the title. I love, Hey, you know what? I, I've got a little bit of a talent. I won't, I, I won't uh, not say that. So mm-hmm. it, it comes in handy. Yeah. It's yeah. the ADHD is what it is. Yeah. That is, that does make a lot of things easier. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe well, it's, that's the same, the word. it's the same thing with, at work when I'm at the brewery, I always tell the the head brewer, I'm like, hey, if you ever can't come up with the name of a beer, come find me. I'm sure if I sit here on it for a bit, I can probably come up with something. And that's what yeah. happened this week, actually. We we had a uh, an Imperial Mocha Stout, and the guy, the head brewer was like, I cannot for the life of me come up with a name. And I'm like, we can do some sort of pun based off of the mocha. Like we can make this work. And I immediately, like I took a drink of it and I was sitting there for a few minutes and I was like, for whatever reason, dirty Harry popped into my head. And I was like, mocha, my day punk. So so we named the beer mocha. my day. (laughs) Oh, oh, that is awesome. And terrible. (laughs) Hey man. That's what happens. <laughs> it's great. It's perfect. It's also terrible. <laughs> the best part was, is when I looked it up on untapped, nobody had ever named a beer that. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Got it. Right. <laughs> or any variation it. of it. I'm like, how did nobody come up with this? <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's great. Oh, goodness. Well, I think we should probably end it there. Before it gets yeah, too that's much a good, into the end, end on a high note. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Well, we'll talk to everybody next week. I hope you all have a good one. And uh, yeah, see you all later. Good night, everybody. I'm a dad. That's what I do.